Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! The barbell hasn't changed in over 100 years. I can take a 25-pound plate and we'll go out on the turf and I'll, I'll have you hating life. We talk about straining your gut, pushing past that comfort level. I want a lot of energy. What better breeding ground is there for being a success in life than the weight room? Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Ron McKeefrey, and this is episode number 263. I want to thank you guys for listening each and every week. Appreciate those of you that like, share, comment. Just continues to help me uh, highlight the great people that we have in the profession. Also want to thank our sponsors and specifically Intech for bringing this episode to you for free. Uh, I only partner with companies that I believe in both the product and the people. And, uh, you know, Jason and Tom and the guys at Intech are, are fantastic people. They got a fantastic product. Um, it's in my weight room here in my garage. I've put it in weight rooms around the country, and um, I just believe in them as, as people and as, as a company. So if you're in the market, reach out to them. If not, next time you see them at a conference or something, just let them know how much you appreciate them. This week, joined by a good buddy of mine, Dwayne Carlisle. Dwayne and I go back, shoot, probably 15, 20 years at this point. Yeah. Uh, He's been the head strength coach at San Francisco 49ers. He's been a uh, master on the NFL, Eagles, and, and, and whatnot. He's had his own business. Um, yeah, he has his own business now as well. He's got a, he's got a cool and unique niche that he's been working in um, and uh, just kills it in everything he does. Everything he's, you know, Purdue, everywhere he's been, he's done it at a, at a high level. And um, it's another, another one of those guys that just thinks outside the box, man. So appreciate you coming on the show, brother. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Boy, and I kind of alluded to some of the stops that you've had along the way, but I mean, we, you know, when you're in this business as long as we've been, you kind of go a little bit everywhere, right? Yeah, man. Which, which one of those experiences best defines, you know, or best prepared you for the person you are today? I would say my first, my first experience at Penn State. I was a sprint coach, jump coach, right out of college, right out of University of Maryland. I was fortunate to get full time position, which you know, that doesn't happen right. at that age. And I worked for this guy named Harry Groves, who's still alive to this day. He's about 90 years old. Wow. When I got to the job, the first thing he had us do was take these huge stakes down and mark the cross-country course. And I was like, like, Coach, what are we doing here? <laughs> he said something that was so compelling. He said, look. He goes, we do what we have to do. I was like, coach, what do you mean by that? You can't get, you can't get facilities to do this? He goes, no. He said, we do what we have to do because excellence is what I'm after. And those guys don't do a good enough job. So from that point, he really set the precedence in terms of my thought process as far as how I go about doing stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's so important. And it's, it's one of those things that sometimes as coaches, especially – when you've come from a, a, you know, maybe a premier or, you know, uh, school or ins institution where you've got all everything handed to you, then you go into a situation where you're maybe your first time head strength coach at a small school and yeah. it's not no, you know, you're doing everything, you know, you're, you're, you're cleaning equipment, you're, you're recruiting staff, you're, you know, you know, meeting with administration coaches. It's, it, it's definitely something that um, is so important. You don't get all the successes. I mean, now you've, you know, you've, you're doing, I mean, you're killing it in business. You've killed it at college level. You killed it at the pro level. All those things don't come, and come without making mistakes along the way. What's, what's one of the biggest mistakes you've made and, and how you learned from it? Man, you said you, this is podcast is only 20 minutes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what is, I hear you, brother. I make daily mistakes. Yeah. Biggest mistakes. I will say. Coming up, you make assumptions. And the assumptions that you typically make is that everybody sees things the way you see it. And you know, me being a person of passion, and you, you want to just go, go, go. As you move forward in your career, you learn a couple things. That communication isn't just about speaking to one person back and forth. It really becomes about listening. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned throughout my career is to really, really listen and to ask questions. I would just do, 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 go, go, go without really 
again, just taking a step back, asking questions, asking the right questions, and really listening, not just hearing to respond, but listening to be able to provide value in the, to, to meet the needs of whatever it is or whoever it is that you're working with. Yeah, what a, what a great piece of advice right there. And, you know, we want to, I think sometimes it's we live in a, a kind of this false bravado where we feel like we have to have all the answers. And, you know, a lot of times, again, when you're that, that, that young coach, that young track coach, that young strength coach, that, you know, young business owner, whatever it is, uh, that lack of vulnerability, you know, can, can be that, that pride that, that can really destroy you really, really quick. There's no question. And I think that that's something that's really, really important. And as I think about the big lessons, it's listening. And if you get it wrong, own it and then get it fixed. Get yeah. it fixed. Yeah. So what, that little piece, I don't want that to go missed. Own your mistakes. Yeah. Own, own your mistakes. What a great yeah. advice as well. Because, I mean, you know, again, I mean, we're all going to make them. You know, uh, and, uh, you know, the people that are willing to own them are the ones that are willing to learn from them and uh, and move forward. So what, what a great a bunch of lots of nuggets in that, in that short exchange right there. Uh, you know, we've both been in this in this profession for quite some time and, and we've gone through the highs and the lows of it, you know, and the challenges of, sure. of you know, uh, hiring and firing and, and switching you know locations and all those things. Um, obviously you're, you're coaching every single day, but you're not coaching at a college or a pro team right now. What were some of the biggest challenges that you felt for you as an individual for, or, or, you know, was the college and, and pro strength and conditioning game and some of the lessons learned from that? Wow. Great question. I would say in my case, my last two positions, so 49ers, I was there six years. Purdue was there six years. We didn't win a lot of games, man. <laughs> we did not win a lot of games. And when you don't win, you see the ugliness rear its head amongst, yeah. not only amongst your, your fellow coaches and, and administrators that you're working with, but just in general, right? You, you're going home and you park and there's your neighbor. And it's like, oh, you guys lost again. You know, it's just... It's, <laughs> It's a tough deal, man. And, but there's a resolve that's built from that. Right. And you start to realize, okay, you know what? Coaching is not who I am. It's what I do. Because if you don't have that, that mindset as it relates to going through the turbulent times as well as the great times, then it really defines you. And right. it shapes your identity. And one thing I've always tried to do is detach myself from the performance of the team to you know, who I am. You know what? I'm winning at home. I'm winning with my wife. I'm winning with my kids. I'm winning every day with the players and building, building young men. Those things aren't manifested in the scoreboard. Right. So look at some of, the, some of the great challenges and yet some of the big learns. It's, again, understanding that regardless of the level of situation that you're, you're working in, the bottom line is, are you being a difference maker? And sometimes, like I said, that's not reflected in wins and losses. But I think that overall, for me, those experiences shape who I am today. They continue to shape who I am because you learn that perseverance. You learn when you lose a lot, you're, you're, going, to, you're going to meet with everybody, right? You're going to, I'm going to see Ron McKeefe. I'm going to see... Uh, Joe Ken, I'm going to see this guy, that guy. You're, you're always trying to find solutions to help right. players get on top. And so there's, there's just a great wealth of information that you learn along that journey. Yeah, I think so many times is all of us, I mean, we chase the logo on our chest as opposed to what, what we really got into the field to do, which yeah. is impact, you know, and, um, you know, I've, I've, you know, just like you, I've coached at the highest level and I've, I've coached at places that people don't necessarily want to go. And some of the most rewarding experiences I've had have been at those places that nobody else wants to go. But you know, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about you throw a light into the light. Uh, you don't throw a light into the light. You throw a light into the darkness. And that's that's what coaching is all about. That's it. All yeah. Right. You, uh, you're working with diverse populations now. I mean, you're, you're working, you know, executives and, gen, you know, the soccer mom maybe and then the, the, the lead athlete as well. I mean, you, you know, what – how do you best prepare yourself 
for that kind of diversity, uh, diversity in, in, in the clientele? That's a great question. I have so much fun with it. Yeah. Go, um, in a given day, you know, I may start with a Silicon Valley billionaire at their homes training. And then I go from there to another home where I train, or I may be at Stanford training, or I may be preparing for NFL officials type stuff, or I may be doing, uh, it's just training somebody to get faster, training somebody on athletic performance. And the, the common denominator is showing up for everyone and understand we've coached long enough where we understand how to meet somebody's needs and more importantly, how to meet someone with where they are. That's right. a key element, right? I'm not trying to force and impress my expertise on them. I'm adapting to where they are and I'm being in the moment with everyone. It doesn't matter. Like I'm there. I'm in the moment. If I'm training, if I got a 13 year old kid, I'm in the moment, right? And understanding that no person, everybody, every, I don't care if it's an elite athlete or it's a 13 year old kid, they're important and they deserve your best. They deserve your best for that moment and they deserve for you to be in that moment and they deserve for you to give them every single thing you have. And so that's one of the, the key common denominators that I take with me from, from population to population. Yeah, I think and just knowing your career and us being friends for so long, you know, I mean, we both have a passion for football and and and, and that sport and, and all the things. But that was probably built working all those non-sexy sports that you had to work you know, as you're climbing up th through the ranks, you know. And, you know, a lot of times coaches will complain about, you know, I'm a football strength coach, but why do I got tennis or why do I have golf or what I have whatever and, you know, by diving in and really being genuine and authentic about your relationships and wanting to improve people, uh, whatever their goal may be, um, that's the kind of stuff that leads to being able to have a successful career, no matter what throws life throws at you. No doubt. I've always, I've always, I'm, I'm going to tell you, Coach Johnny Parker, who yeah. if you guys don't know, this guy is a legend in the field of strength and conditioning. Co working alongside him at San Francisco 49ers, I was just amazed at how this guy coached. You talk about someone who's in the moment, somebody where nothing was too big for him. He would stay, he'd stay until 12 midnight if a player asked him to stay. He's just so passionate about people and passionate about coaching and the things that he did to focus on or to bring out the best in, in them, not only as an athlete, but as a person, like little things asking, he, he got to know his players, wives or girlfriends, significant others names. That was huge. You know, somebody would come in and he'd say to Anthony Adams, who's a social media mogul. Now he'd say, all right, Andonika, you ready to work? Let's go. <laughs> I, I know his wife's name because coach Parker knew his wife's name. Right. And so it's, it's the little things that, you see a guy like him do that you want to emulate because you just see the success and the impact, but it's about getting to know the person. And when you get to know the person, whether you're a head strength coach for football or whether you're working with crew, doesn't matter. If you're in it for the people, bloom where you're planted in yeah. that moment and serve them to your highest level. Because at the end of the day, man, that's who you are, right? That's who you are. If you serve, you serve. No question. No question. And that's servant leadership is the biggest, is the best form of leadership by far. You, you, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump ahead on, on your book recommendation, but you know, I really, one of you, the books that you recommend or the book that you recommended was blue ocean and such a, such a, an awesome book if you haven't read it. Um, but you know, it's all about kind of, you know, staying out of the red bloody waters where everybody's kind of fighting and, and going to where, um, there's open, you know, and you have tremendous amount of opportunity and, and not a lot of competition because of whatever reason. Yeah. You know, you've done that um, in, a, in a variety of ways, but one of the unique ways is that you, you worked with the, you're working with the NFL officials. Yeah. And my entire career, I've gone into every game walking onto the field saying, I'm going to be nice to the officials today. And every single game I've failed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's almost like it's a personal attack, right? Right. But, 
you know, you're a strength coach and, and, and probably felt like I did, but you saw the opportunity there uh, because, I mean, so some of these officials, I mean, they're business owners, they're, they're, they're incredibly smart people, they're executives, they're, you know, it's, it's an underserved, I mean, an under um, appreciated uh, uh, demographic. And, and yet you found that you said, Hey, look, let me put my arms around you and, and help you. Uh, talk a little bit about what you're doing with them and, that, and what's unique about that, but then also kind of the business strategy of kind of reaching out to that demographic. Well, and looking at, I, I work with them pretty much year round. The year kicks off with an assessment. So the officials go through a pretty relatively rigorous assessment that they have to pass to get on the field. And in that process, I'm working with a lot of NFL executives. So you talk about skill sets and things that you previously did that prepare you for these type of opportunities. Certainly the roles that I've had, because the people that I deal with and the magnitude of the importance of making sure that everything is right, because it's the National Football League, right? It's a big time. Well, I'm, not, I'm not meeting these guys at their house. It's a whole system set up. We do... During the season, I support them every week. There's 17 crews, so I meet with each crew during the course of the season. So that means I'm either, I make San Francisco my home base. So eight, eight crews rotate through there. And then last year, eight crews, I was on the road. because When San Francisco was on the road, I was on the road. And then this year, I'll make San Francisco my home base as well as Oakland. And I'll see all 17 crews, support them nutrition, support them training-wise, support them in, in all facets. We have an online platform created for these guys. I'm, I'm there for them. I built relationships with them. There's, there's an element of trust. But more importantly, having sat in their pregame meetings and gotten to know these guys, they're super, super smart. They're super thorough. Most times in a game, quote unquote mistake is what's glamorized, right? It's that one moment. Right. What people don't acknowledge is is the unbelievable accuracy that these guys have and the unbelievable preparation that these guys have and, and how they have to process things in an instantaneous second. We as fans, we're looking, we're we're officiating based on a replay. Right. Well, there's, there's is live, right? So I, the opportunity came about just looking at NFL wanted, wanted a company that would come in, work with them. They went through a vetting process. There were a number of companies that submitted proposals and so forth. And fortunately, you know, they selected us. And this has been five years in the making. It's been great. Awesome. I hope to continue it for quite some time. I also do the same for the Pac-12, football officials and baseball umpires. It's awesome. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's such a cool, uh, uh, you know, like you said, like I said, under, underappreciated group, and it's going to, you know, it's probably one of those things that I would say um, you working with them has made you probably a better strength coach, I would imagine. Oh, no doubt. You know, no doubt. and uh, and by, you know, just interacting and having to present in a different way, and, and like you said, to a, a very intelligent group, and you know, appreciate those split second decisions and, and all that, but it's uh, very demanding, it, you know, stress and nutrition and travel and, and all those elements where you, you know, I mean, you're essentially, you're, I know you've got a team of people around you at this point, but you know, you've had to build a team of experts to kind of help provide um, those deals. What, what are some of the biggest challenges that that demographic faces and, and how you're addressing them? Well, the biggest challenge, first and foremost, is earning their trust, right? right? It's no different than your new strength coach and you go into an environment, you're taking over for somebody else, it was good. And right. you got to earn the player's trust. And for those guys, it's about earning them their trust, them knowing that I'm there to serve them and that I'm not this person that's reporting back to the league officials and powers that be, that there's this confidentiality in our right. relationship. And I'm understanding that, fellas, two things, are, two things that are important to me. One, your career, your career longevity, and two, you stay healthy. Right. I think that they've under, 
they understand that now based on, not based on just me saying it, but me showing up every day and serving them in that capacity. Right, right. You know, the, that entrepreneurial spirit, I mean, it's something that, well, you know, whether or not you're born with it or something that's developed, it's, it's something that's obviously prevalent in your career, you know, being, you know, going from, you know, coaching track to owning your own business to being in the NFL to being in college and uh, running essentially an organization, you know, at Purdue and, um, and now doing the things that you're doing now. How important is it in your mind for a strength coach to have or, or foster or develop that, that entrepreneurial spirit? It goes back to some of the elements in your book, Ron. Some of the things you talk about. Strength coach CEO, right? <laughs> I, I think that those things are, when you look at skill set, right? You have guys who are you know, young guns that are coming up. They're really limited, right? They're all about the X's and O's. They're all about, you know, Bonta Chuck and, you know, this is West Side philosophy and this and that. And they're all about the, they just focus straight on the development of certain you know, physical traits. And right. So forth, which obviously we know that that's an important element to the job. But as you, as you mature and you understand the big picture, you realize that your skill set has to grow. It has to grow in every area, your communication skills. Think of how many times you're, you're public speaking. Right? Think of how many times you're asked to get in front of an alum, alumni group. And yeah, sure, you can hit them with the rah-rah, right? And everyone's like all fired up. Oh yeah, I'd love to work with him. But what are you saying? I mean, right. are, you, are you bringing, are you delivering content? Are you delivering something of substance? So at some point, you have to develop your skill set. You got to, when you're dealing with administrators and you want equipment or you're trying to convince them that this, uh, this is better for us, this is going to help our student athletes. What, how are you bringing that message? Right. Is it you put on a piece of scrap paper or you do your due diligence and you do your homework and, and you learn how to kind of politic, understand who the key stakeholders are that's going to drive decisions and, uh, and then put together a system where it's already the momentum's already building and you got people on your side before you even make that official presentation. Right. The skill sets that you got to develop. And I, I have a couple, I have a couple young billionaires that I train. Wow. That's a legitimate young billionaires. Right. And I learned so much from them in those one-on-one sessions. Like I feel like I should be paying them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just through the conversations and seeing how they approach things and their vision and the, it's the blue ocean for them. Right. And you start learning all these different things. And I asked this one guy, this question, I said, so as your company's grown, like three years ago, you were at, you said a hundred employees and now you're at 1500. What's, how did you transition? What skills did you have to develop along the way? And he said, you have to continue to keep growing. You know, I have to have a coach to coach me because there's elements in uncharted waters that I'm moving into. That, you know, Coach Singletary, it's one of my favorite quotes. Check this out. He said, the better you get, the better you must become. Yeah. I think that sums it up. What a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic piece of advice. Well, man, we, we end the show with some, um, you know, some resources and you've already dropped a couple of nuggets there that are from coaching and life, you know, uh, advice, but what's the best piece of coaching advice you ever received? Well, I'll tell you, I've had so many great coaches that I've worked with and Mike Boyle was my first strength coach right in college. And I've got great advice from him, great advice from Mike Wojcik, who I've known since high school in constant contact with him today. But I'm going to say, Coach Parker, like when I went to Coach Parker, I wasn't a young gun when I went to him, right? And Coach Parker, we've heard this statement many a time. And what, what makes it so potent for me is I saw him live it every day. He said, Coach, players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. I hadn't heard that before. I started working with him and he said it. You know, he just said, coach, I'm going to tell you something right now. Players don't care how much you know until they know. How much you know. Right? They don't care, coach. And I go back to the, you know, him getting to know the guys, getting to know right. their names, their wives' names, getting to know. He would do, 
he had this con- he had this contest where every day he challenged the players to come up with a word that he didn't know. Like they could pull it out of the dictionary, and if coach couldn't define the word, then they won, right? <laughs> you know, he did that for about three months, and I think there were only four or five words that he didn't know. Wow. So that, to me, is one of the quotes that I, I just hold dear, I hold true. I heard it late in, heard it late in life, but it's, there's a resounding truth to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny because Mark Sonovich, I worked with the Tampa Bay. He, he specifically, I remember him every day, he would write a new word and a definition <laughs> in his notebook, and it was all Johnny Parker driven. Uh, in a way, that's awesome. What about a, uh, you give us a book, all right, give us an app, and, and we're going to link up uh, coachcarlisle.com, and, and uh, you know, Dwayne's got a, an excellent podcast, in Pursuit of Excellence, and um, just again, he's got, I mean, I respect anybody that puts resources out there for the coaching community. And it's, it's something that, um, you know, is, it's incredibly humbling to do because you're, you're kind of putting yourself out there from a vulnerability standpoint and, and, and all that. But I mean, everything you've put out is, is excellent. So I okay. highly recommend that, but give us a book or an or you app and a website recommendation. Boy, I'll tell you what, on the, on the website recommendation, see it's, Everybody, there's a training website recommendation and then there's a business website yeah. recommendation. My business one would be Fizzle. It's fizzle.co because I'm in that business mode and that, that's a great website. They have great resources. And then my training one is Altus. Yeah. Yeah, I love Altus. They, they have great content, great coaches. I'm a big fan of Dan Path and everything that they're doing there. So that would be that. And then an app recommendation. The one I, I listed, Fit, FitTiv, that one, for, that's more of a personal app that I just use to track everything. It integrates with, integrates with my phone, integrates with my Apple Watch, integrates with my heart rate monitor, gives you great reports. I can customize the type of workouts that I do. And it obviously tracks all of that information. So that's, that would be my, my app because I use it every day. Right. No, that's fantastic. I don't know much about Fizzle. I'll have to look into that one for sure. But I agree 100% on Altus. Man, we, we uh, like I said, we've been friends for a long time. And, and one of the things that I respect the most about you is just, you know, how you think outside the box. I mean, you're very, you know, it, it, it's very easy in this profession to get pigeonholed into the four walls of the weight room. Um, but you've always challenged yourself whether or not it's what you read, what you, you know, the people that you talk to. Um, your openness to go outside of the traditional, you know, strength coach to learn about your craft um, is something that I've always respected and just I've always walked away from almost every conversation we've ever had a better, better coach and better person. And I, I appreciate the friendship, man. Yeah, man. If I could just tell a real quick story just about how much I value your, what you do and, and who you are. Came to speak at your conference, I don't know, five or six years ago at Tennessee. Got picked up by Grant Guy. And it's like, man, there's something really different about this guy. Little did I know I'd be working with him. But he, because I was so impressed with the kid, I watched some work because you had two clinics going on simultaneously. You had yeah. that athlete camp. Yeah. And then you had the camp. Then you had the, the coaches clinic. Yeah. So I watched Grant during that coaches doing the working with the athletes. And I was like, wow. This kid locked in, focused, this and that. Long story short, there's an opportunity. You call me. You say, hey, look, I got this kid, Grant Guy. It's like, okay. So, said, well, that's that kid that picked me up. You're like, yep. And I'm going to tell you something. You talk about preparation. You prepared this guy to be an outstanding professional. I just, you know, I'd like to think maybe I just polished him up a little bit. But no. that was everything that you said he was and then some and now he's a head strength coach at western michigan had five years of time to work with him as well and man big ron kudos thank you you did a great job with him thanks man no he's a he, that's all grant he's a fantastic fantastic person fantastic coach and uh hungry it's easy to it's easy to support those guys right and, yeah but man thanks so much for coming on the show and 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 uh, being such a great friend Oh, thank you.
That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Ron dot McKeefer. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Shop Talk.